welcome everybody. My name is Mohamed Iqbal Bouladiar, a PhD student in Telecom Bretagne, France. I will present you my paper about connecting GUI applications using a software bus. I will first introduce the context and present the scenarios which are the purpose of the paper, and in the end discuss the benefits and limits of the architecture. All Unix systems gain their power from following specific laws. Programs only do one thing well, and they can work nicely together. With the ability to pipe the output of small tools, we are able to accomplish complex tasks. But this only works for the command line tools, and only there. Most GUI applications like the one presented here, don't respect the Unix philosophy. They are monolithic, they are isolated islands, and they can't cooperate with other programs to accomplish bigger tasks. Even if some do have a command line interface, in this mode we can't directly visualize data currently being manipulated. In the past I have developed a Linux daemon called Jin. It transforms multi-touch events to keyboard clicks, according to the current application in focus, and certain rules defined by the user. Jin allowed many users to feel a multi-touch ability without the need to implement the support in all applications and touch their code. Users get the feature directly by transforming and injecting events in applications. Here I started asking questions on how we can get the most of such ad hoc capabilities. Instead of injecting keyboard and mouse clicks, I want to access more powerful functions like the application's internal methods. I have tested using a new input device like the Leap Motion to control green boxes in the Inkscape drawing application. The injection of the movement of the green boxes was done using a software bus in Linux called eBus. Dbus is an inter-process communication system. Applications have the ability to export their internal methods on the bus and get calls from outside. They can send signals once something changed. And they can have properties which can be described as global variables. Dbus is widely used in Linux system but for other purposes and is being rewritten inside Linux kernel to make it able to handle even gigabytes of data quickly. Here is an example of an application exporting its internal methods on the bus. We can invoke them when needed, and we can see the effect directly on the application. In this example, after running the application Inkscape, I can search for its name in the DBus viewer. I can get a list of its exported methods. I can invoke methods to draw ellipses or other supported geometries. I still have the ability to edit objects from the usual interface. I can also subscribe to signals. When the user moves an object, I get a notification including the object name. So once we have developed these transformers and injectors, we focused on the research to move Unix principles to GUI applications using Linux capabilities, and search for all possible scenarios which become possible once we have a software bus. Here we will start showing the five scenarios we have discussed and developed. We have targeted creative applications, and specifically the drawing application Inkscape. Our first scenario shows the ability to script applications from another terminal. We used Python to write a small code. It draws circles and it manipulates them. We see the result directly on the software canvas. We can now draw any form of complex patterns following the code we write. In this example, I opened Inkscape, and I have opened another command line terminal. I connected to dbus, then to the application. After that, I am able to invoke methods to draw elements.
I can also select a part of the elements or all, deselect them, move them, rotate by angle, etc. The modification can be done from many different terminals at once. Our second scenario transforms Inkscape into an interactive application. Not only we draw elements using code, but also we can manipulate the variable values using sliders and see the result in real time. It's like we have taken the previous scenario and have put it inside an configurable application. Here, I have developed a GUI application that connects to the bus. It allowed me not only to create elements, but also to live modify them. I select the property to modify, and I get a live feedback when I move the slider. Of course, the communication can be optimized, which was not the goal of this prototype. In this case we have advanced handling of a new functionality. We developed transparent window application. It modifies the color of the elements behind it in Inkscape. It's a showcase of how complex we can go. I run the transparent application which connects to Dbus. Using system and window manager libraries, it can know its position by reference to Inkscape application. By communicating to Inkscape through the bus, it can know the elements which lie behind it. It can then apply a filter on them. Here we have only modified the color, but the API is rich for other manipulations. There is no restrictions on the language used to connect and invoke methods. We use many different devices these days, and if we want to target all of them, we need to develop one application per device. Using a software bus, we can develop only one, remove the default interface of the application, and deploy it on all platforms. Then we add ad hoc interfaces depending on the platform. Ad hoc interfaces can be developed by a platform creator like Kubernetes. The original developers of the application won't even be asked to do any modifications. As ad hoc interfaces will show, on top the app canvas, and invoke methods by accessing the bus. In this scenario we imagine an application composer, by reference to Quartz Composer. This is the sort of a tool that can be developed, by Linux distribution creators. It will parse all the available applications for functionalities and allow the user to link the output of one to the input of another. Very simple example is transforming a simple drawing application into an animation software. The composer changes the position of the elements inside Inkscape, export to an image each time, then in the end make a video out of the images. In this last scenario we discuss a new way to present application documentation. Tutorials generally comes either in video format, or in text with screenshots and where to click. In the two cases the user is obliged to switch between the tutorial and the application. He may easily lose focus. We present a method where he can get the documentation step by step, shown on top of the application. The advancement to the next line in the tutorial can be automated, as we have the signaling mechanisms that can send a notification when the user accomplishes the current task, and so go to the next. Here is a diagram explaining tooltip placement and the communication. The old form of documentation, either textual or video, can still be generated by automating advancement and screenshot taking. As the interface can be put in an ad hoc way, the generation will take care of it automatically. From the presented scenarios, users have more power on what they can do with their applications.
developers can shrink development time and focus on ad hoc GUI elements depending on the platform. This is urgent as we have more and more of different devices and there is a problem on developing for all of them at once. On the other side the limits of the work is that it's still in the explorative prototype level. It only shows the possibilities and more work is needed to provide durable solutions. Thanks for your attention. Please forgive me for not being able to come to the conference. You can reach me using mail or social networks if you have questions or remarks. I am very interested in pursuing this work in a more general way. I have provided a link to my slides.